It looks like a diamond, it feels like a diamond, it sparkles like a diamond. That's because it is a diamond. And it's all the brainchild of a British environmentalist and businessman who was looking for a way to take carbon out of the atmosphere. And I was struck by the thought that the most enduring form of carbon known to mankind is probably the diamond. And I thought, wow, you know, what if we could turn atmospheric carbon into a diamond? That seemed uh, a little bit crazy, uh, but really quite um, amazing if we could achieve it. The magic happens here in rural England. High-tech machinery sucks carbon dioxide from the air. Rainwater is then split to create hydrogen and the two are combined to form methane. It's then fed into a mill and the diamonds are grown in balls of plasma heated to 8,000 degrees Celsius. Two weeks later, the diamond is ready and it's all fueled by renewable energy. For me, this is 21st century technology. Uh, it's being used to fight the climate crisis, to create greater sustainability. It's part of the green industrial revolution and it's a great example of how we can live this greener life and still live. We can have bling without the sting. It's a far cry from conventional diamond mining in Africa, which scars the earth environmentally and is plagued by forced labour and human rights violations. But when faced with a choice, will consumers choose man-made or earth-formed diamonds? People just put a price on a shiny rock, so if it's a man-made shiny rock, yeah. So I really want, like, a... Sorry to my future husband, um, like an old vintage ring. So I don't know, I just don't think, I don't think they were man-made back then and I just quite like something with history. The Sky Diamond will go on sale next year. Prices will be similar to mined diamonds, but production will be limited, making them the rarest but greenest gems on the planet. Sarah Morris, TRT World.